Hello, um, this is Everett, and uh, today I'm going to talk about a um, fix for a problem um, that I've had uh, on a approach track to a bed bridge span um, that I have here. I um, have these removable bridges uh, that I made um, a while back when I built the layout, and uh, as you can see, I've got the span here. Got the pegs to hold them in place. So anyway, let me put this thing back and show you what the problem was. Well, uh, some time ago, I'm not sure how it happened, but I uh, really didn't have the uh, end of the track, the lead-in track in here secured properly. It was just uh, glued down using Elmer's squeeze and caulk, and uh, somehow, I don't know, the edge of the rail got caught and torn out of the track and bent, so it was pretty much shot, so I had to... Uh, end up taking this little uh, lead-in section out here. So uh, I'm going to show you uh, today um, what I'm going to do to uh, put this piece of track in and uh, reinforce uh, the ends of the lead-in track. I mean, eventually I'm going to have to do it here too because I didn't really do it properly when I first made this thing, but hey, live and learn. Uh, so that's what this little uh, video blog is going to be about today and uh, this is kind of a niche thing I'm not sure how many of you out there have situations where you need to span any distance um, like I do there's probably a few but uh, um, I believe model railroaders have good imagination so um, you may find other uses for at least the technique I'm going to show you, and of course, there's probably multiple ways of solving this problem, uh, but, you know, take what you can from this and uh, go with this. If this inspires you to fix something or to improve something, great. So, uh, let me get on with it. Okay, the first thing uh, I need to do is I need to do a little bit more prep work here. There's still a little bit of... Uh, glue left on the cork row bed. Actually, it's Elmer's squeeze and caulk. Stuff comes in handy. It's great for uh, gluing down track. Uh, so I need to sand that away a little bit. And uh, by the way, if you have a need to... Uh... Oh, I lost my piece. Never mind. Had it right here. If you need to take a piece, a section of track out, especially if you have a scenic area and you don't want to tear out the cork road bed, you don't care if you don't care about the cork row bed. You just cut the rails with a Dremel modal tool and just scrape the whole thing up and put a new piece of cork in. But in this case, I didn't want to do that. So I mean, I had my track glued down here, and if you want to take up track that has been glued down, at least the easiest way I found, let's say this is still glued down, is to take your blade. I mean, first cut the track where you want, where you need to have it cut. Just take a uh, a thin box cutting blade like that and just start running it underneath like that okay do one side and then go ahead and do the other okay and just keep working your way in gently so as not to tear up the cork road because if you try to just tear it up you're going to tear big holes in the cork road bed and you're going to have to take the road bed out again anyway but uh, if you do it carefully uh, you can uh, pull the track up fairly clean and uh, get a good amount of the glue off i mean hopefully you haven't used too much of the squeeze and caulk to hold this thing down but yeah just work your way on either side just going a little bit further in every time until the track comes off. That's uh, that's how I did that. I, mean, I didn't videotape that because wasn't thinking at the time. You get into doing stuff and I just space it off. So I'm going to go sand a little bit here, make it a little bit smooth, so I won't have any bumps in the new track. I put down There's a little bit more glue here. All right, I think we're we are good to go. That's looking fairly smooth. And again, you know, if you've got scenery around here, um, you'll probably want to be a bit more careful than I am. I mean, this stuff is fairly basic what I have here so we may have to 
refine your techniques um, if you've got a lot of stuff going on here. Hopefully you won't have to do this, but in my case, uh, this kind of happens. So I don't know if, uh, if you had a bridge on your layout, you may want to use the same technique that I'm going to use. Actually, what I'm going to do um, is on the approach, uh, okay. I have a piece of PC tie strip. Okay, this is actually an end scale throw bar for a turnout. That's what I'm going to do. Is going to take this piece, cut it to length, and uh, both caulk, and also I'm going to drill a couple of holes and run a couple of brads through there. Let me do a close up. Zoom in on here so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm going to cut this to length and glue this down and uh, put a couple of brads in here. I'm going to drill the holes in there too. I don't want to just nail it down and have this bend down. That's what's something you want to be kind of careful about doing too uh, when you get to that point. But then once this is uh, um, glued and bratted down in place, gap the foil, then put another piece of put another piece of track in here and take the last couple of ties off uh, the bottom of the rail and so that the rails overhang here and basically solder the rails to the PC tie. So this puppy, those puppies ain't going nowhere, at least not with a lot of force. So, uh, and uh, then what I'll do is I'll take my Dremel Moto tool and cut the rail essentially at the same angle um, as they uh, butt up against uh, Put up against the bridge part. I mean, when I cut, when I gap the rails, I mean, essentially I put the bridge in place, put it down in place, ran a full length of track across, and then just gapped them. So, uh, essentially, that's what I'm going to do again to a certain extent. But you'll see what I'm doing. All right, let's uh, go ahead and cut. Okay, let me cut this. I got this little wire snip here. I'm going to have to trim this. Alright. I'll make that a little shorter. Okay, cool. That's good enough. Yeah, that'll work. Alright. 